Welcome to the second tutorial for Voices VR Producer. In this tutorial, uh, we will take off uh, where the last tutorial finished with the rectangular image. Uh, but now we will add more elements to this scene. So we're going to add a uh, logo type, which is a PNG image. Uh, we're going to add a web view and with dynamic content. And we're also going to add a virtual screen. So let's uh, kick off by adding a logo type to this image. Uh, what we do then is we select the root entity because we're going to make a new entity which will be a child of the root entity. So we then click add child and we add image. We open our image asset which uh, will, needs to be in the PNG format. So here is our logo type. And you can see that we support the transparency. Uh, so around this uh, the image is square but it has transparency so it looks great. Now we can position this. Uh, let's say we want to cover the top, uh, then we can position it up there. We can also cover the bottom by positioning it down here. Uh, or we can uh, drag it around um, uh, like so, so we can position it freely. And if we want to rotate it, we can also rotate it like this. So let's keep it uh, right around there. I think it's good. Another thing that we can add is a web view. So we go in here. And let's go to YouTube to get some uh, content for this web view and show what it can do. So you load up the web view, uh, you uh, add the URL, and then it's going to load. So when you click and drag, and you, in this window, in the uh, when you click and drag in the edit view, uh, you will pan around, and when you use the scroll wheel, you will zoom. When you do the same thing in a web view, though, you will interact with the web view. So let's say I click here. And I'm actually going to load up this video and it's going to start playing. And when I scroll here, it's going to scroll up and down in this web view. And I can even go in here if I'm careful and I can select the full screen view, uh, whatever commercial or whatever this is. So this will play. I will now hit pause uh, and I'm going to keep this, uh, I'm going to put this uh, over here. The third thing I want to show now is how to add a virtual screen with live video content. So for this, I want to add a virtual screen, but you can see it's grayed out. And this is because in order to add live video sources, we first need to give the scene a name. So I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it to the desktop, and I'm going to just call it test for now. So I save it, and now I can add a virtual screen video source. So it's going to show up here. And for live video sources, I need to assign uh, what input I want to use for this. Uh, so I expand the input menu here. And I can select type. And right now I have a uh, camera connected with HDMI and an InnoGenie uh, capture card. So I'm going to, this card is a, use a direct show. If uh, I can also use Blackmagic sources and RTMP if I want to, but now I'm going to use direct show. So I select this. And uh, the capture card supports 4K resolution, but the camera actually only gives uh, 1920 by 1080, so I have to lower the resolution. And there you can see me. Uh, sitting in front of the computer and making a tutorial. I actually think that this image is a bit dark, uh, so I can go into the color menu and I can uh, add some gain. I think this is more matched with what we have here. And if I wanted to, I could add a lookup table and I could tweak the individual color gain and set the black point. So we have some basic color correction things. And just like the other ones, I can uh, position this uh, freely. Uh, so I think I'm going to put it over there. Notice one thing now, that now the edit view has uh, graphics, it has a virtual screen with live video, and it has this uh, the YouTube uh, video with HTML5. None of these are present in uh, the live output, they're only in the edit view. And this is a great feature of Voices VR Producer. The changes that you make to the edit view are not transitioned into the live view until you make a transition. This means that you can make edits to the scene, uh, you can make it look uh, just like you want it to, and then when you're happy with it, that's when you can make the transition to the live view, uh, which is a good professional workflow. So before uh, I showed the cut transition, which just immediately cut it, uh, now I want to show the fade transition, and in order to show this off, I will increase the fade time to 2 seconds or 2000 um, milliseconds thereabouts. So now when I do fade, 
watch how the uh, things that we have here in the scene slowly fade out into the live view. And right now I actually inhibited the, uh, the output, but if we were live to YouTube, then uh, the output of the live scene here is what would be sent to YouTube or the other sources like SDI if that is what you're doing. Thank you for uh, watching and listening to the second tutorial.